Hi, I'm James Bridle, and I'm the author of Ways of Being. It's a book about the intelligence of everything around us, other people, animals, plants, and even machines. What I discovered in writing this book is that when you start to expand your idea of what intelligence might be beyond the human, you start to discover all these kind of extraordinary things about the world and different ways we could relate to it that have some quite important lessons for the future. To give you some idea of what I mean by the, the intelligence of other beings, let me tell you a couple of quick stories. The first of which is that we're just starting to discover, starting to recognise the extraordinary ability of plants, for example. Historically, science has always treated plants as kind of dumb machines, right? We can just take them into small pieces, study all the little bits of them, pull off the flowers and leaves, and understand how they work. But it turns out that's not a good way of understanding what are, of course, whole organisms, whole living creatures. When you start to study them as having behaviours, you start to discover something else entirely. So, for example, a few years ago, researchers recorded the sound of caterpillars munching on the leaves of cress plants. They then took the caterpillars away, and sometime later, they played the sound of the munching back to the plants. Immediately, the plants responded in exactly the same way. They flooded their leaves with chemical defences to prevent them being eaten by predators. Somehow, the plants could hear. Now, we have no idea how they do this, but they are aware of their surroundings in all kinds of ways. They do way more extraordinary things than this. In another set of experiments a few years ago, some scientists took mimosa plants, which are um, small shrubs with little leaves that curl up really quickly when they're shocked or touched. And they put these plants on a little rail and they drop them like this, just like 10 centimeters, enough to shock them into closing up their leaves. But they discovered that if they did that a few times, the plants stopped closing up their leaves. They seemed to have realized that this shock wasn't dangerous. The researchers tried some other things. They kept poking them. They kind of blew them with wind. The leaves would close up. But when dropped like this, they didn't. The plants had learned that this was not a dangerous situation. They tried it again, weeks, even months later. Same reaction. The plants had learned, and they remembered, and they behaved differently in the future. These are findings new to science that radically change the way we understand the awarenesses of everything around us. Because everything around us has its own awareness. Everything around us is participating in the same world as we are. And if we start to take it seriously as having its own intelligence, we can do other things in the world that we couldn't even imagine before possible. Here's another example. If you go walking in the woods on a kind of wet day, um, look for little brightly coloured patches of kind of something that looks a bit like fungus or um, algae on the ground. That might be a slime mould. Slime moulds are really interesting creatures. It's not even clear really what they are, if they're fungus, if they're an algae. They sit somewhere in between these categories. Because one of the things you learn when you start discovering these extraordinary abilities, you discover that nothing really fits into categories at all. One thing slime moulds are really, really good at is finding the most efficient paths between different bits of food. A few years ago, researchers tested them on this. They made a little map of the Tokyo metro area, right? A map of, of that kind of city area with blobs of food, little oat flakes that slime moulds like to eat, in place of the various cities and towns. And they put slime mould on there. 24 hours later, the slime mould had made this thing that looked like a map. In fact, it was an almost exact representation of the Tokyo metro area railway map. Feet of engineering that had taken humans hundreds of years to achieve, an incredibly efficient route map, had been made in 24 hours by this weird fungal slime mould. But they're not just a simple trick, they're actually doing something very complicated. There's a problem in mathematics called the travelling salesman problem, which asks, what's the shortest route between, say, five cities? Right? You've got to visit each one and only once, as quickly as possible. Turns out that's a really mathematically hard problem, because there's five times four times three times two times one different routes, and there's no quick answer, you just have to add up each one individually. Now, our brains and computers hate these kind of problems. Because as you add more cities, they get more complicated. The graph of the time taken to solve them goes like this, right? Because it becomes six times five times four times three times two times one, seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, right? It's a really fearsomely difficult problem. But it turns out that slime models can solve this problem in linear time. That means it doesn't get harder for them. The graph of solving it just goes like this. And we've got no idea how they do it. 
But for some reason, this little fungus that lives on the forest floor eating wood is better at solving some of the hardest mathematical problems we've been able to formulate. Not only better than us at it, but better than the biggest supercomputers we've ever built. And it turns out the world is filled with all kinds of creatures, organisms, beings that have these extraordinary abilities that we're only just becoming aware of. And becoming aware of them radically changes our relationship to the world. I started writing this book because I was interested in what it means to call something artificially intelligent. You know, what it means to have political relationships with non-humans. What would it mean, for example, in the face of climate change to actually have the voice of the birds, the deer, the plants in our parliaments? How do we even begin to answer those kind of questions? And what I found was that by actually listening to the abilities of other creatures, reading some of these scientific papers, trying to understand them myself, I found that those things were not only fascinating, but also possible. We could change the way we live as a result of these discoveries. We could become better friends to the Earth.